Okay, so when I wrote my first book, and it was along these same lines as the ones I described, um, I, you know, to the extent that I thought anybody would read it other than my mom, you know, I kind of figured like, okay, these are books for Jewish readers, um, and I only later realized how how much of a lack of imagination that revealed on my part. Um, my editor at my publisher, um, who's the person who's responsible for buying the manuscript, and you know, she's the person who decides that you're going to be published by this publishing house. Um, I've been fortunate to work with the same editor for all five of my books, five of my novels. Um, and I remember the very first time I ever spoke with her on the phone um, during contract negotiation for my first book. And in that first conversation I ever had with her, I asked her what her background was. And what I meant by that question was, what is your background in publishing? Like, how long have you been with this publisher? You mostly work with fiction, nonfiction. And I'll I'll remember this the rest of my life. She paused on the phone and she says, well, I'm Italian American, I'm a lapsed Roman Catholic, and I'm like so embarrassed that she thinks this is like what I asked her. You know, like, you're like oh my God, which like, she thought I was like, I don't know, ethnically profiling her or something. Like, it's like, I was like, that was so not what I meant. And then she said to me, you know, I read your book and I felt like I was reading about my own life and my own family. And I was kind of like, how is that possible? And she said, well, you know, being Italian American, being from this like amazing, you know, culture that, you know, that goes back centuries and is so amazing, you know, so central to Western civilization. And it's so rich in, in music and art and all of these contributions to the world, um, but that you're separated from it by a language that you're not speaking every day and by a, you know, a, a place, a country you don't live in. And the only versions of that culture that are here are these like sort of like horrible, kitschy stereotypes that you don't even want to be associated with. She's like, you know, but somehow you want to bring that richness to back to this place, but you can't because they're separate. She says, or, you know, being a lapsed Roman Catholic, feeling like I'm part of this majestic religious tradition, but I can't fully embrace it as a modern person, but it has this long shadow and I can't really leave it. And I don't, she's like, I just felt like I was reading about my own life. And I have to say, um, and I remember with this first novel, I, I was one of the first places my publisher sent me was to um, Southeast Booksellers Association Conference, which was at that time was in Fort Lauderdale. It was for uh, people who own bookstore and bookstore franchises around the southeastern United States. So when I went there, I figured like, okay, I'm going to this conference. I'm going to like talk to Jewish ladies from Florida because that's who's going to be at this conference. And they had a horrible event there that was like, it was like they had 50 authors, 50 banquet tables. They put one author at each table. They would ring a bell. They would give you two minutes to pitch your book to these 10 people at the table it was, and then move you to, it was like speed dating for authors, right? It was like the most horrible thing. So I get to like the first table here and everybody's wearing like a, t a name tag with their name and their the name of their store or whatever they work for and the city and state where their, where their store, their business was. And I get to the first table and I'm like, okay, that looks like there's some Jewish ladies from Miami there. So you know, I told them about my book. They ring the bell, I get to the next table. And I look around and it's like Arkansas, 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 Kentucky, Arkansas. And I'm thinking like, okay, how am I gonna pitch this book? And they ring the bell and I say, my book has a lot of biblical themes. And they're like, biblical themes? And I have to tell you, first of all, the Christian readers know the Bible, the Jewish readers do not. Um, and I will tell you, I mean, I'm often invited to speak at churches I speak at a lot of churches. I speak at um, Christian colleges and seminaries. Um, I've been on Christian radio. Um, so, you know, these are like, you know, because these, these are people, they, they regard my work, they regard me as a religious writer, writer who deals with religious themes. So, um, you know, and what I've discovered is that, you know, you write one book, but after you publish that book, Everybody is reading a different book from the book that you wrote, which is actually a great thing because most of the time they're reading a better book than the book that you wrote. <laughs> so I feel that what, you know, because what I, what I had overlooked in my narrow perspective, I had not appreciated that the whole purpose of literature is communication. Right? I mean, and, and what I've realized is, you know, I've talked today about my translations into Hebrew of my books, but my books have been translated into many languages. Um, you know, and I, you know, I don't think there are that many Norwegian Jews reading my books. I mean, there probably are a few, but, you know, I mean, there are, I, I feel that, um, you know, my books are very popular in Germany, but that's a whole other question of why Jewish books are popular in Germany. Um, but basically, I feel that, you know, you're, they're reading, people, 
there's an uh, there's a communication that you're doing when you write a book, and you're not the only one writing it because the reader you start the book as the writer, but the reader finishes it. So um, there's you I I underestimated my audience when I thought I was writing only for Jewish readers. Uh -huh.